Hi everybody, this is a video for people who've got a, uh, say, a YouTube gaming channel or a Twitch channel or a Mixer channel and you kind of sometimes struggle with deciding which games to buy and play. And this is really down to when, when you're thinking about, you've got maybe some games that you're, you're well known for on your channel, um, you know, that you're popular for, that maybe have driven the growth of your channel. But, you know, we can't play the same games all the time. And I think sometimes one of the mistakes people make with their um, with their channels is, is really just playing the same game all the time up to a point where they then fall out of love with that game. Um, or maybe the game falls out of favour. Um, now, I know lots of the advice is basically, you know, with YouTube and Twitch and everything, is to you pick a game or or even a genre, I guess that's what I've probably done, and then you just you stick with that because that's what your audience will want. However, I think that really does apply to very, very popular YouTubers. And I think when you're building your, your, your subscriber base or your, your, um, your watcher base, your subs, all that sort of stuff, Playing other games can help because it, it attracts other people and it enables you to take advantage of opportunities that might arise because of interest in other games. But what I found happens is, say in my case, for example, I've uh, driven a lot of growth from, from my YouTube channel through making Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Warzone videos. Um, that's gone very, very well for me. Um, uh, Daisy videos have gone very, very well for, well for me as well and lots of other you know, lots of other games as well. And the big thing for me is that I really enjoy playing those games. I, I love Modern Warfare. I love Warzone. You know, I love DayZ. And that combined with my love of making YouTube videos, as you know, I make <laughs> an awful lot of them, helps me to create lots of content. However, I am human and I sometimes get a bit bored and I think I want to play another video game. Now, if there's a really good video game that I, ju I just want to play, because I want to play it. So, for example, at the moment I'm playing like Ace Combat 7, and um, Resident Evil 2 Remake, you know, I will I will play those games because I just want to play them and I just want to enjoy that sort of game. And I'll probably do, and they may well be on the channel right now, Let's Play videos of those. So I'll record myself playing those videos and then I upload them as Let's Plays. They never get as many views as my videos that help people with problems with other games because the problem is that I won't play those games enough for me to become an expert at them where I can then offer advice. You know, I doubt I'll do, you know, a, uh, a beginner's quick start guide to Ace Combat or a beginner's quick start guide to Resident Evil 2 Remake because I'll just be playing through them on easy just to enjoy the experience. However, sometimes I'll then think, oh, there's a game that I fancy playing. I'm not sure whether I'm going to really love it, but I've got to kind of ask myself a couple of questions is, can I make good content for it um, and is it worth making content for you know for that game is it worth investing all of the time in in that game you know to learn it to become an expert on it beyond just enjoying it as a, as a video game because you know we can all do that because we you know we all have limited resource in terms of time and limited resources in terms of money so there's a couple of tools that you may want to consider if you're in if you if you're on the fence about something um, so, for example, the the the, the, um, the case scenario that I'm going to use in this video is a game called Insurgency Sta Sandstorm here. So, Insurgency Sandstorm, um, it's on the PC. Um, so, I will play it through uh, GeForce Now, uh, the, uh, the the game streaming service. Um, pretty sure it's on there. Let's have a look. Insur Insurgent. Yeah, there it is. So, Insurgency Sandstorm is there. So, you know, I can play it on my old. I can play it on my old laptop, and it's just gone down to half price in the Steam in a Steam sale. So it's twelve ninety nine, you know, which is which is a good price. It's a good price. But the question I've got to ask myself is: I mean, I have played this on the free to play weekend, so I know it, it's it's fun to play. But I've got to think, right? Okay, so beyond being doing let's play videos where people could watch me play it, could I? Is it worth me investing the time to get good enough at it to be able to create content? you know that is worth f for people to come and have a look at so that's kind of the answer you know then we that, that's the question we need to answer so what we'll do so the two tools you can kind of look at this to help you decide um is uh, uh steam charts so if you just do a google search for steam charts daisy for example um it'll bring up how many people are actually playing 
a game on Steam. So this is on PC. Uh, people who've got, got Steam installed and bought the game through that. So if we look at DayZ, for example, a game that I make an awful lot of content at, you can see that DayZ, at its all-time peak in its history, had 45,000 people playing it. And at the moment, um, there was 15,000 people playing it 12 hours ago, and the, over the last 24 hours, there was almost 20,000 people playing it. And then if we look at this, this area down here, you can see when the game was released, there was quite a lot of people interested in in it went down 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 something happened in 2016 probably a, a, an update to the game we've got a peak sort of end of 2018 that would have been when it came out on xbox then a peak in 2020 so when it came out on ps4 now it, these peaks there as you can see you know that the, there is a really good rise up here and this would probably be um sorry these peaks when i say that when they came out on playstation and came out on xbox what what would have probably happened is obviously this doesn't show you xbox and playstation um, players but there was there would have been more interest in the game so people would have started playing it again on pc you know these, these sort of things can, can go they do correlate towards each other so you can see you know there's quite a lot of interest in the game and that you could that kind of relates to you know the, the interest that people have you know probably in in my videos as well and then if you use Google Trends, if you just do a search for Google Trends and then put in like DayZ and change it to like worldwide over the past five years, what this chart shows you, although it doesn't show you absolute numbers, it says that, okay, so if 100 is the maximum interest that was shown in DayZ over the last five years, that was round about July 2016. And then we had a bit of a slump then it started to come back up again and this probably reflects you know, its release on console. So you can see DayZ, pretty popular. Now, Modern Warfare um, isn't available on Steam, so we can't look at that. But what we can look at is the, the Google Trend. So as you can see, Modern Warfare, when it was released, loads and loads of interest. That was its peak interest in the last five years. And then it dropped off. And then we'd probably had various updates that made it yeah, more popular in terms of search terms. Then if you look at Warzone, when Warzone was, was released, so, so up to the release, you know, where, where there would have been leaks and trailers and stuff like that, little bit of interest. Then, as it was released, loads of interest, loads of people searching for the term Warzone drops down a bit, and then you've got peaks. Probably when you know new seasons come out, and it's still pretty much if 100 is the peak, you know, the maximum that it ever was, um, it's still lots and lots of people. So again, that reflects why you know my Warzone videos are doing very well. So let's look at an, another game here. Um, that I've started to make content out and I've decided to invest the time in learning how to play the survival game Rust on PC. So as you can see with Rust, its all time peak was 125,000 players and its 24 hour peak of the last day is 60,000 players. So if you compare that with DayZ, you can see there's, you know, there's three times more people playing Rust. Um, now, Rust is a survival game similar to Daisy, but a lot more arcadey, a lot more shooty. You know, it's a different sort of experience. But again, if we look at you know the, the the player base, you can see that it's kind of it's risen, it's dropped down a little bit recently, but there's still lots of people. So it's definitely worth my time to invest in learning about Rust, playing Rust an awful lot, to produce videos for Rust. Um, as long as I'm enjoying playing it, I'm, I'm never saying with any of this. You know, play games because you you know just for the content you've got to be pretty hardcore to do that. But the beauty with video game channels on YouTube, Twitch, and etc. is that th there's there's a whole breadth of different games that you can play. You know, and if there's one that you, that you decide you don't like, you know, you go on to the next one. Especially when you've got a small channel like myself, where the majority of my viewers come through searching. They're not my subscribers, although my subscribers do watch my videos. Most the bit the highest percentage of people who are searching for a search term, you know, how do I survive in DayZ? What is the best gun in Modern Warfare? That sort of thing. And also with Rust, if we were to go back to DayZ, where you've got these spikes in interest, where the game would have been released on console, Rust is probably, I think, coming out on console very, very soon. Probably in July, I think. I mean, we'll have to see. We'll see a spike in interest as well. Again, this doesn't show and will not show console play. But you can see people would start looking for, you know, how to survive in Rust. What's the best weapon in Rust? How do I mod a Rust server? All that sort of stuff. Um, as a matter of interest as well, here's Scum. So Scum is a very interesting daisy like game with... Um, a much more involved survival mechanics in terms of eating and, and the way your body works. Unfortunately, though, with Scum, if we, if we take a look at Scum with the Steam charts with the players, um, when it 
you know, I think probably when it first came out there, or near when it first came out, you know, 68,000 people were playing it at its peak. Unfortunately, though, recently, say over the last day, only 2,800 people were playing it. And then if you look at the search terms, it, it's just it's just hanging on. You know that there's not that many people looking for details about Scum. Now, it may, may well change. And I will put some time into Scum to see if I really enjoy it. And if I really get the hang of it and really start enjoying it, I will produce more content anyway. Because there's a very strong argument for niche content. You know, if if you find a game that you know you really enjoy and get good at and create content about it, the size of the potential audience doesn't matter that much. Because if you're producing the content, they will come. You know, that kind of idea of, you know, if you build it, they will come. Um, field of dreams kind of, kind of thing um, and you can have a very healthy YouTube channel and a very healthy YouTube or Twitch you know, subscriber base based on a game that doesn't have many players but then again so that basically means you know in terms of scum I would have to really enjoy playing it you know enjoy enjoy playing it more than Daisy to really dive in it and see another new game recently came out that's is dead side so dead side you know at its peak it had 9500 people playing it at the same time it's only got about 1200 people playing it at the moment um as you see the interest has dropped off for quite a while and if you do a google search, trend search for dead side video game there isn't actually enough data so at the moment dead side it's probably not me worth really trying to to put a lot of time into dead side now you could argue that long term because you know, if if the devs really get it together and have a good marketing campaign and they release it on console, um, you know, and they really knock it out of the park, putting a lot of effort in now, producing lots of guides and, and how tos and, and about that, so it could pay off in the long term. But at the moment, I've played Dead Side, you know, for a couple of hours and it seems all right, but it doesn't. I don't enjoy it any more than I would Daisy. So I would probably be better off, you know, spending my time on Scum and definitely spend my time. You know, learning and, and and playing playing Rust, but again, I'll come back to that concept of the fact that niche content can work. Um, and if you're really enjoying, you know, say you play Dead Side and you go, actually, this is amazing. I like this so much more than Daisy and Rust and Scum or other games. You know, you make content because what's very very important about the YouTube videos or the Twitch streams or the mixed streams you do is your passion for that content and and how you do it. Um, so you know, if you're very passionate, you know you will find the audience for that. Now, finally, let's get back to the reason. You know, we, so we're looking at insurgency sandstorm. So, is it worth spending thirteen quid, which isn't much? You know, it's just a few posh coffees on um, on something like insurgency sandstorm. So, let's have a look. So, let's have a look at the player base for insurgency sandstorm. So, at its peak. 14,400 were playing it at the same time. That's the most people they've ever had on PC on Steam playing it. Over the last 24 hours, they've had 5,000 people playing it at the same time. Now, an update has just come out. Um, and if we look at the search term for um, Insurgency stand, Sandstorm over the last five years, you see it had a big peak probably when, when it was released back in December. And then it's, it's tailed off since then. Um, However, Insurgency Sandstorm is um, slated for a, a console release this year. And we'd expect to see a big spike in interest about Insurgency Sandstorm videos when that happens. So if we compare these, you know, these figures on, on PC, you could say, okay, so if 5,000 people are playing it, and the idea is that if there's 5,000 people who are playing it, there's 5,000 people who may be you know, searching for videos about how to get bat better at it and things like that. So let, let's compare that to Dead Side. So it's much more than Dead Side. It's, about, it, it's more than Scum. It's you know, 10 times less than Rust. And it's like uh, a quarter of uh, what DayZ are showing. So the question I would have to ask myself now is say, well, okay, so I might fancy giving it a go. And I would definitely be justified in, in purchasing it just as a video game, just to play and do some playthroughs of. But because of the, the fact that there's other games that I could be making content about that I'm very interested in playing, you know, Rust um, especially, 
I'd really have to say I'm not sure whether I could put enough time into Insurgency Sandstorm to get you know good at it to get as good as I would need to be in order to provide and to make some quality YouTube videos beyond let's play that could give people advice how to get better at the game so th th so this is where you have that hard decision where, where where you've got your business head which is about the growth um, of your YouTube channel or your, or your mixer or, or your twitch channel and you'll want you want you know your your, your um, need it's not a need it's a want isn't it you want to play different video games because sometimes you've got as you say well look I've got limited time not that many people are playing this game I don't know when it's definitely coming out on console I'm better off playing and learning say about rust because the the investment in time that I put into rust and in, in and making videos about it may well um, in the long term be a better option um, because there's going to be more people in interested in this game and more people interested in videos about this game so you know so that's probably my decision my decision probably will be not to get in Sanity Sandstorm not to invest the time in learning it to play it because I'm better off going look, okay look you know, don't, don't do that um, have a little bit of discipline Play Rust, you know. Play Resident Evil Two. Uh, finish those those um, playthroughs. Do the uh, Ace Combat playthroughs. Make the DayZ videos that you, that you love doing, rather than jump about and jump onto another game. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully that's useful. If you're in a similar sort of, sort of situation where you're almost get convincing yourself something, you probably you knew already. We've gone through a lot, an awful lot of logic to get to a, a decision that we probably knew in the beginning that. Um, in this case, it was probably going to be a case of, come on, Rob, concentrate on the videos that do well for you because you enjoy playing those games anyway. To give yourself a little break by playing something else for a bit and give you give yourself a chance to to come up with different ideas for those games. Don't, you know, it's the idea that the grass is always greener. You know, you'll find a better experience. Because to be honest, if I'm after a shooting game, you know, what are the best shooting games at the moment? You're looking at Modern Warfare. You're looking at Warzone. Um, Daisy is pretty good. I know I don't do much PvP Daisy, but Daisy is a really good shooting game. Um, you know, PUBG is still you know up there. You know, games like Apex as well, things like that. Or I mean, I tell you what, here's another one that I should have looked for that we can do. If we do um, Steam Charts um, Arc, here we go. So Arc Survivor Evolved, a game I've never ever played, um, but it, it but I do have a free version of it because it was free on the Epic Games Store. It is a survival game, so you could say it's related to my content, you know, with DayZ. So its all-time peak was 158,000 players, which is more than Rust. Its 24-hour uh, peak over the last day is 88,000 players. So and so that's more than Rust, and you know, way more than DayZ. So you could say, well, look, Rob, you've got a free copy of this already. Why don't you just do some videos about Ark and just just test the water? Because there's a lot of people who are interested in this game. You may really like it. It kind of fits in with the genre of games that, that I make videos about. And why not give that a go if you're after trying something different rather than um, investing the time and money in a game like Insurgency that you know you're not really sure whether it's got, there's going to be that many many people interested in it. And if you if I was really interested in buying the game because I've seen the gameplay, I was like, oh, this is amazing. You know, I would have probably bought it anyway. There we go. Hopefully that's useful. Hopefully that's helped you to make some decisions about which games you should be buying uh, or choosing to buy in order to enjoy playing them and to give you the ability and the options of making lots of content about them. If you found the video useful, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much. And of course, I'll see you again soon.